What's up guys, I've got a brand new video for you today and guess what? Adobe finally launched the full version of Photoshop for iPad today and I'm gonna walk you through what it's like to do retouching in this version of Photoshop. Now, if you have the Adobe Photography plan which includes Photoshop and Lightroom, then you'll automatically get this for iPad. Now this isn't entirely the full desktop version because I've seen a lot of things that are missing and there's a lot of things that are the same or in just in different places, but it's definitely easier to use for image manipulation than using the Lightroom app. I think it's pretty awesome. You can also do cloud syncing. So you could be working on a Photoshop file on your desktop and then you can leave and go and open it up on your iPad and continue working. And now with iPad OS 13, you finally get some form of file management where you can import files off an SD card, make correct folders and you know, sort things out and actually have more of a desktop experience. And I also got this NAR box, which I'm pretty excited to try out. I'm not gonna use it for this video, but you can also use this as a wireless SSD. So you actually have an external hard drive wireless off the iPad and uh, I'm pretty excited to try that out. But uh, yeah, let's jump into this. We're gonna put some files onto the iPad and uh, get working. All right, so I have some files on an SD card here. They are PSD files. Basically, they're just images. They're raw photos from the Fuji X Pro 3, which I can't open up on the iPad yet but I can open them up on the desktop version and I save them to an SD card. They basically are just the images opened up with a film simulation applied and nothing else. And uh, we're gonna do skin retouching and some color adjustments and stuff in Photoshop. So I'm gonna put in the SD card reader here. We're gonna go to the files here and this is my SD card, it's Canon. You click on the ones you wanna add to it. And we're gonna go to my iPad and I got a folder here called test images. And in here, you're gonna see them transfer off the SD card and that's really, really fast. All right, so taking a look at these files in here, uh, they have no thumbnails. And even with iPad OS's new file management, which is actually really awesome, there's still no thumbnails for these PSDs, but you can click on them and it will pop them up and you can preview them. That's the image we're gonna work on today. So I'm gonna open up Photoshop and we're gonna to go to import and open and that's the bottom left corner here in files. And I'm gonna open up this file here and it's gonna load in the PSD. So this is the PSD that I actually had on my desktop. So once the image is loaded in here, we're gonna zoom in. Uh, we're gonna do some skin touch up. She has really good skin, so it's not gonna be that hard to do, but basically what I wanna do is get rid of some of these hair wisps that are cutting across her face here because I don't really like them. They're not very flattering. And uh, I'll show you guys how to use the clone tool and the healing tool. And then we'll do some adjustment layers and things like that. But first off, we're gonna duplicate this layer. So we're gonna go down here to the three dots and we're gonna go duplicate layer because we don't want to affect the main layer we're working on in case we have to go back and make some changes. So clicking on the little healing brush here, this is the little band-aid icon. And uh, in here you have your brush size and your brush hardness or feathering. So if you click on this, you can feather it out. You can see by the icon of the softer edges or a little bit harder. And then this is gonna be your brush size. And because the iPad is pressure sensitive, the harder you push down with the pencil, you actually get you know a larger or a harder brush. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna Put it around here. We're gonna soften up the edge a bit, something like that. Basically what we're just gonna do is we're gonna go in here and paint out the hair. So just like this. Over her eye, I'm not gonna touch this. We're gonna use the clone tool for this. So what I'm gonna do is continue on here after the eye and just keep painting down here. I'm gonna leave these hairs here because I feel like they're pretty natural. They're part of you know, the actual hair that's coming down. It's not really impeding on her face and causing any issues. Um, the next section I wanna tackle here is this eye. And if you click and hold down on the healing tool, it'll actually pop up the clone tool. And it's kind of cool that they've done that. They've kind of stacked tools that are very similar. That way it saves up a bit of room so they can actually have less icons on the side. Now you have the exact same options with your brush size here and whether you wanna have it harder or more feathered. But here you also have the option of doing the opacity. So if you don't want it to be as intense. So we actually will lower that a little bit. And before I do this, I'm gonna make one new layer. So we hit this here. And if you go down to these little three dots here, uh, you have this in the full version of Photoshop where you can adjust where your clone stamp is gonna be going from. So you can have your current layer or current and below. And we want current and below because we wanna actually select what's under this layer, but apply it to the above layer. And this way we can go in and not have it you know, too harsh. We can adjust the opacity of it. I'm gonna go in here. And the cool thing is you have this little white button here and this is gonna be your target. You can see it's toggling the target and that's gonna set the source. And so what that's gonna do is we're gonna target the, the little area here 
and then we can paint this area and it's going to use that area that we've targeted to actually paint with. Cool, now that that's done, we're going to go over here and I'm going to kind of uh, lighten up this crease here. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to actually, s actually I'll make a new layer. And then I'm going to target this section here. And I'm just going to start to paint that out. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna use the healing tool to actually go through and do some touch up on just some of the small imperfections. So we're gonna click on this, go back to the healing tool, and make the brush a little bit smaller. And the best thing about the iPad is you can literally just go in here and paint things out super quick, super easy. I know you can do this with a Wacom tablet, which I don't use, I just use a mouse. But for me, this is something new and <laughs> quite a bit faster to actually go through and make these little quick adjustments and changes and fix these imperfections, you know? All right, cool. So I've got this retouch basically where I want it. So now I'm gonna go in and make some adjustment layers. And uh, just like the original Photoshop, you have all these adjustment layers and different options to actually change some settings. Uh, I feel like it's missing a few adjustment layers though, some that I would actually use. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually click on the layer we want to affect. And you see the blending options. And under that you have add clip adjustment. So we click on that. And then we've got brightness, black and white, color balance, exposure, hue and saturation levels and vibrance. But I don't see anything to do with curves in here, which is something I would normally use, but let's go into color balance here. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move it to the top layer because I have all these other little layers that we have. And we can group these layers by clicking down on the new layer, holding go new empty group. And we're gonna add these into that group. This will just keep our Photoshop document a little bit more organized. So this group that I made that has all the changes and actually has um, all of our touch up in it. I can toggle that on and off. You can see that there, but we're going to go to color balance here. And this is where I see some things that aren't in this version of Photoshop that are in the full version of desktop. You normally have the option to actually change your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows and the color balance of those. And I don't see those in here, but I'm going to make this image a little bit warmer. So we're going to move the color balance to the reds and to the yellows. And although I like this, I feel like her skin is way too orange now, way too warm. So the cool thing is we can actually mask this stuff off. So we can actually go in here. We're going to make another color balance adjustment layer. I'm going to put this above. I'm going to paint the entire layer black. So now I can make my mask. I'll put, make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to make it white. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so you can see my actual changes here. And we're gonna go in here and we're gonna just paint in over the face. And I might change this just to make it more obvious so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna do the hair too because I feel like it's also too warm. Coloring outside the lines like a small school child. All right, that's good enough to make this selection. I'm not gonna change it too much. So we're gonna go back here. And I'm obviously way too green. And I'm just gonna cool up her skin so it's not so warm, but I'm still gonna make it match the image. So we're gonna go here, a bit more blue. Something like that. Now she might look a little too green. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and blend this so there's a little bit less. So something like that. If I toggle that on and off, you can see how much it changed her hair and her skin. So it just makes it look a little bit more natural and less warm. And that's almost it. I want to do one more thing. We're going to add an exposure adjustment layer. And I do this on every single one of my images. Click on that. And we're going to do the offset to about 40. And sometimes I'll play with the gamma. I feel like I could darken this up a little bit more, make it look a little bit more dramatic. Something like that, and then we can bring the offset up a bit. 
something like that and that's basically it that image looks great touch up looks good and uh we did it super quick super easy so yeah working off the ipad pro and ipad os along with you know the full version of photoshop has got me pretty excited to edit photos on the ipad and you know once adobe starts adding some of the missing features it's going to be really awesome it's already running really fast super smooth uh, it's a great editing experience so let me know in the comments if you plan on getting photoshop for ipad or do you rock something like affinity photo also let me know if you want some tutorials on the ipad uh, anyway that's it for this video if you like it give it a thumbs up if you dislike this video give it a thumbs down twice don't forget to hit that notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next one here's the setup so we got the ipad pro running through HDMI to the Atomos Ninja 5 so I can do screen recording because I feel like the frame rate off this when you're doing like screen recording on the actual iPad is all over the place so it syncs easier when I'm recording with this because it's actually 60 frames per second and then we've got the overhead cam here which you can kind of see and that's the Sony a7 III up top there on a C stand over top of everything I got the light mat here I got the Deity D3 Pro mic, which I'm using as a shotgun mic. I'm really loving this mic, it's really good. And I've got the C200 right there, and uh, yeah, the small HD monitor so I can see myself while I'm filming. Well, I try not to look at it too much because it, it's kind of awkward. Oh, look at the slow zoom. So yeah, it's got the face detection on, that dual pixel autofocus. But yeah. That's how I did this tutorial. It's a lot of random stuff to set up.